Hello everyone, this is Akash here from BlenderSkill.cf and in this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this abstract geometric earth in Blender. Now the idea behind this render uh, was this image uh, which I found uh, from 123rf.com um, So uh, 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 this image is kind of good, okay? It's like an abstract earth uh, and I like the geometric effect also and that's why I thought to create this in Blender and the result is pretty similar as you can see uh, so we're gonna create this in Blender and I'm gonna use Blender version 2.76 and the Cycles Render Engine for this so let's get started with a new scene in Blender uh, so this is a default scene start by deleting the cube by pressing X and delete and press Shift A for mesh uh, add in a uh, icosphere okay so um, the uh, sphere is basically for the earth now you might be wondering why I did, I did not use the UV sphere now um, if you see in an icosphere the arrangement of all the vertices is pretty uniform okay and uh, that's why uh, I'm gonna use icosphere well if you see a UV sphere uh, the vertices are much concentrated at the poles rather than the, uh, the, the middle part okay so this is the icosphere here now uh, make sure you don't lose these settings of this our icosphere section so we are going to increase the subdivisions to 3 and uh, yeah you can increase to 4 but uh, 3 is fine for now we'll keep it at 3 okay so that's done now just drag out this panel to view more properties go to the modifiers tab add modifier and then add in a wireframe modifier okay now this has converted our earth or the sphere to a wireframe now wireframe is important as you can see these lines uh, on the uh, on the earth even in this image you can see all these uh, lines this uh, gives us a geometric effect and that's why it's important so once when you have done that you can uncheck replace original uh, so, the, uh, so the wireframe modifier does not replace the icosphere uncheck even thickness and uh, decrease the thickness uh, to be 0 0.003 that's uh, nice pretty thin okay uh, we should keep it thin that's nice and uh, I want to separate the wireframe from the uh, the original sphere okay so because uh, we want to separate it uh, because this gives us much more control if we keep it in the same object then we won't have much control over it so to do that press shift D to duplicate it then press the escape key and then uh, uh, keep the wireframe modifier on for this one and check replace original this one and then select the other icosphere by right clicking on it and then remove this uh, wireframe modifier so you can see it's pretty same but now we have one sphere with the uh, uh, wireframe and the other sphere which is uh, which is the whole sphere basically okay so now select the wireframe and uh, uh, now we can add in some separate uh, modifiers to this wireframe so I'm gonna add in a uh, uh, subdivision surface modifier and as you can see you can create beautiful patterns uh, by using subsurf modifiers or the bevel modifiers so you can get nice patterns uh, for your wireframe uh, move the subsurf modifier above the wireframe now as you can see uh, it's it's a bit more a nicer uh, a wireframe now a bit more nice pattern okay so I'm gonna keep it till 1 and change the render also to be 1 in the subsurf modifier can go to 2 but uh, I think 1 is nice so I'm going to keep it to be 1 okay now select the uh, original icosphere and then add one modifier and select the subsurf modifier and uh, I'm going to keep it to be 2 so that we have a nicely smoothened sphere now and I can also change the shading to be smooth so this is uh, the setup of the sphere now you can select this uh, wireframe and then click on add modifier it's like displace. Move the displace up. Uh, it should be above the subsurf and it should be above uh, all the other modifiers. Click on this new button to create a new texture and then change the blender render to be the cycles render engine. Come in the textures panel and make sure displace is selected uh, and uh, change the type to be uh, Voronoi texture. You can use clouds but Voronoi gives us a bit more better effect I guess okay so and uh, we keep the default settings just change this 
displacement strength I guess uh, it should be pretty less um, you keep it to be around about 0.2 yeah that's fine I'm gonna increase this I'll just scale the wireframe a bit so it's outside the uh, sphere from all the sides okay all right so now we have our sphere set up and now we can move into the materials and the material is basically adding the uh, gradient effect and the map okay so um, uh, just split this view or you can just use this timeline as a node editor so open up the node editor and make sure material is selected select the uh, original icosphere and then click on this new button to add in a new material so we have the new or the basic material setup now I'm gonna change the world color to be white okay, so that we can see what we're doing also we don't need this lamp so I'm gonna delete it I'm just gonna make it completely white Oh, okay, not mature rendered. Okay, this is fine. All right, so I'm, so I'm gonna select the icosphere. This is the material. Now to do this, start by adding in a gradient texture. Okay, so Shift A texture, gradient texture. Place it over here. Connect this FAC uh, to the diffuse color. Now you can see we have got the gradient from black to white. How we control? How can we control this colors? Uh, so you can control these colors by adding in a color ramp node. So press shift A and then uh, and from the converter to the color ramp. And place it over here between the gradient texture and the diffuse node. And uh, now we can control the gradient as you can see with this node. Okay, so uh, here we're going to just set up all the colors which we want. So I'm going to start with a greenish color, okay, a light, a bluish green color I should say. So I have the hex value of all the colors, uh, but you can use your own colors. It, uh, I guess the first color is near this one, uh, but I'm going to use the hex code which I have. So it's 8, 2, uh, B, A, A, and 3. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a bit, uh, pretty dark uh, bluish green. And then you can click on this plus button to add in one more bar and select that one. Change the color to be a uh, bluish color. So again, I have the hex code, so 9, D, uh, B, E, E, D. So now we have the uh, blue color. Now I can click on the last bar, which is the white color now. Click on it and then change the color to be a purplish color. So for this one also, I have the hex code, so I'm going to uh, type in F7, C, C, F, F. Okay, so now we have the gradient effect with all the proper colors now. It's pretty similar to the colors which are used with this uh, image and uh, it, it looks pretty cool now okay now uh, then I'm gonna now we need to add in the world map okay so before that we need to unwrap this UV sphere so that we can add in texture to it uh, it's not a UV sphere it's an icosphere I don't know why am I telling you UV sphere okay so I'm just gonna change this to be a UV image editor over here and um, loading the image by clicking on this open button and then you can open the image now this image is from NASA and uh, if you want you can download this image I'll provide a link in the description uh, it's it's the basically a black and white image uh, of, of the world basically okay so, so now I have loaded in the image and uh, it's pretty high resolution I guess it was very high and then I had to decrease the resolution okay so now we have it loaded press shift A and then uh, texture image texture to load in the image texture click on this button and select the uh, image and uh, and then I'm gonna just name it map okay so that's uh, that's pretty much better now now we need to unwrap the sphere so come in the solid view then press tab to enter the indeed mo edit mode then press U and then select uh, sphere projection now you can see that uh, the uh, the uh, unwrapped result over here but it, it's a bit uh, different so you can scale it by pressing S, X and make it cover just the entire uh, entire uh, texture over here and if you come in the render preview mode and if we just connect uh, the image texture to be the diffuse color input you can see the entire world now it's pretty simple just using an image texture now okay now I'm gonna connect this back to this now we need to mix this image texture with this gradient so that the parts which are white in the image texture uh, use a white color 
while the other parts which are black use this gradient effect. So you can do this by uh, uh, using the image texture as a mask and we can, uh, we can uh, do this by using a mix node. So press shift A, color, mix RGB, place it between the color ramp and the diffuse node and then take the color output from the image texture node and put it in the FAC input. Okay, so now you can see that we have the world map and the gradient effect showing together and the uh, white parts are actually grey now so you can just change the second color to be completely white. Okay, now as you can see it's white and it's pretty similar to what we have in this image also. Okay, and um, and yeah, that's the uh, how, uh, that's uh, how you can just apply the uh, image on the gradient. You can also change the white color by using any other color, but I guess white looks good in this. Scene. Okay, so now uh, we can also rotate the uh, the texture by using a mapping node. So you can press Shift A, vector mapping, place it over here. Connect the vector to the image texture. The a mapping node and then press shift A and then uh, add in a texture coordinates node and then connect the UV to the mapping node so now we have we can rotate it uh, we can rotate the um, map but now uh, I'm sure you may be wondering how can we rotate it and you'll be tempted to use these rotation values uh, of X Y and Z but uh, I have tried these uh, all these three values and they didn't work but I found this location value works. So if you increase the X, you can see you can rotate the Earth properly, and Y also is nice, and yeah, Z is also nice. I don't think uh, Z is um, required in this case. But if you use the X rotation, it, it rotates very awkward. I don't I don't like the rotation from the Z axis or the Y axis. So it's better to use the location values. Okay, so that's pretty much it with the material of the. Uh, of the main uh, sphere. Now you can select the wireframe sphere by clicking on it, right clicking on it. Click on this new button to add in a new material and I'm, go I'm just going to remove this diffuse and add in a, a emission shader so that it emits light and I'm going to change this to be white, completely white. Okay, and as you can see, you can see the uh, wireframe now. Make sure the world color is also completely white otherwise you'll see some a white outline around the earth which is not good so keep it white um, so now let's set up the camera now now as you can see in this image the green the green colors are over here while the blue is in the middle and then the purplish colors are at the bottom so how do we do that uh, well you need to actually rotate and find out where uh, you can get that uh, kind of a texture so I guess this part uh, I guess is pretty similar to that so here I have the green, the blue and the purple. I might go a bit, yeah that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna use this part of my sphere. It may be different for everyone. So um, you may have to experiment it. And once when you have selected the position, you can press Ctrl, Alt, Number Pad 0 to snap the camera into place. Now if you don't have a number pad, you can go to File, Use Preferences, then uh, System, oh, no, Input I guess, yeah, Input and then uh, check on this emulate numpad so that uh, you can just press ctrl alt and then, uh, and then zero uh, to snap the camera so now um, I have snapped the camera into place and uh, yeah now we have the uh, proper texture now and the facing of the yeah uh, of the texture now um, I may have to rotate this a bit so I can rotate it like this yeah that's fine I can rotate the earth a bit. Uh, wait one second. Let me select both of my sphere and the uh, and the wireframe, and then uh, and then rotate this by pressing R. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. Now I'm gonna move the map a bit. So use these uh, x and y coordinates to move it. So let's try the x. Um, so let's just move it. Yeah, we'll keep uh, uh, this kind of a place, okay, where this uh, South America is there and the ocean. Because uh, I found that this area, you can see the uh, proper geometric effect also and the continents, uh, which is similar to this image also. And uh, yeah, let's 
so I'm going to use the area but you can use any other area if you want and then you can use these, this y value to rotate it a bit more uh, around about this much should be fine I'm going to rotate this a bit more yeah that's fine now it will be different for everyone all these rotation values you can't just copy it and use it it may be same or it may be different because the gradient texture is not always same I guess and uh, if uh, you may want to uh, uh, small, uh, unwrap your, uh, your sphere again so if you want to do that from the camera view you can press use uh, and then sphere projection and then again you need to scale your UV map by pressing S and then X just to cover the entire surface like that yeah like such and then render that's fine you can see uh, the green part is here the blue is over here and the purplish area is over here so we have the nice gradient effect and uh, I'll rotate the earth a bit more I don't know yeah kind of yeah this should be fine this area is fine make it a bit up I'll be fine leave it it's fine okay like that I'm gonna save it by pressing Control S and it's pretty much it now let's uh, give it a render and let's see uh, what we can do in the compositor it's pretty simple okay uh, for the compositor also I'm just gonna add in a vignette because there's nothing much you can do with this um, so I'm gonna you can render this scene with 10 samples also uh, but I, in, in my final scene I use 100 and for this one I'm gonna use 60 samples and then you can click on this render button and the rendering will start I'm just gonna close this 3D view and let's focus only on the render now so the rendering has finished and uh, this is the render yeah it's pretty similar to my result I believe yeah it's yeah it's pretty similar and I like it okay so um, now let's move it to the compositor so to do that change this UV image editor to be the node editor and then click on this render layers button check use nodes so here are the render, uh, render layers node um, then uh, we'll append in photo editing nodes pack so photo editing nodes is just a collection of uh, photo editing nodes <laughs> which allow you to add photo editing effects to your scene in Blender. So you can just append all the nodes, so file, append, photo editing nodes and then node tree, select all the nodes and append from library. Okay, I'm going to add in a viewer node by pressing Control, shift and left clicking on the render layer node. Make sure backdrop is checked so that we can view the uh, uh, the render. Now you can press Shift A and in the group you'll find all the new nodes. I'm going to just add in a vignette node. Place it here. And uh, I guess we'll use around about um, 0.4 for the opacity because I don't want it to show up too much. Yeah, 0.4 is fine. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to increase the brightness a bit by using our RGB curves node that's too much yeah that's, that's fine that's pretty much it with the compositor you can connect this RGB curves with the composite node and you can save the project now and to view the result you can just change render, uh, render result to be the viewer node and that's the scene guys that's the tutorial I hope you all enjoyed it it's pretty short one and uh, the result is pretty similar to my final result also which is good uh, so if you want to download the map or the uh, photo editing notes pack you can click on the link below and from there you can download it and uh, yeah that's pretty much it and thanks to the author who has created this image and yeah and uh, you can view many other pictures on this site all are just abstract earths, uh, earth over here and yeah so this one was a pretty cool one and uh, and uh, I had great fun making this tutorial and if you if you like the tutorial you can like it and uh, and uh, please subscribe and leave a comment thanks for watching